Ooh, this is a banger. This is a banger. This is a banger for a lot of people. This is one of those fights that um, you want to put a star next to it. You know, you don't want to, even though it's an opener, you don't want to miss this one. Always great seeing my next guest back in action. Going to be fighting on this stacked UFC 296 card December 16th, taking on Muslim Salkov. It is rude boy Randy Brown back here on the program. Randy, how are you, man? Good, man. I'm good. How about yourself? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm not going to be on this uh, stacked event. Uh, what a way to end uh, 2023. Uh, let's start there, man. How excited were you to be a part of this card, or is it just like any other event for you? Um, I was super excited, man. I was super excited, you know, see, uh, you know, uh, Fellow Jamaican, like, Leon Edwards at the top of the card. You know what I mean? I'm kicking it off. So, you know, I was excited to be a part of that for sure. Yeah. You know, that's uh, gr- what? Two title fights. You know what I mean? Tons of big names. You know, I w- it was an honor. Good. Well, that's great. Um, looked like you got a, a full camp for this one. When did you find out? Um, a minute. I had I had a solid, like, 12 weeks or so. Yeah. Okay. So well, I've, that's, I've, that, that's always I've nice. Been, I've been putting in work for a minute for it. Yeah, so I've been ready. And was the timing right to come back and, and you know, have this fight now? Or were you hoping it, it was going to be a bit sooner? Like, like take me through sort of between last fight and this fight. No, it was it was perfect. It was perfect, man. I'm, you already know I'm, I'm an active guy. I'm always willing to jump in and, and get a, a scrap in. So I want to be as active as possible. Any opportunity I get to climb up and claw my way to the top, you know I'm going to take it. So um, it was good. Let's talk about Muslim Salikov, a veteran who's been in the UFC for a while, 19-4 and record. How are you looking at this fight stylistically? Ooh, this is a banger. This is a banger. This is a banger for a lot of people. This is one of those fights that um, you want to put a star next to it. You know, you don't want to, even though it's an opener, you don't want to miss this one because um, Salikov is a crafty veteran, crafty veteran, good kickboxer, um, former signed out world champion, uh, was in the rankings, ranked number 12 at one point, lost to Lee Jinglang, but got booted from the rankings due to inactivity because of injuries. Um, but now he's back and he seems hungry. Than ever and um it's a good a good test for me and a, a good uh credible win against a, a tough tough respectable guy uh what does camp look like um i know in the past you've done some cross training i know you used to go to california and train a bit at king's uh, what does camp look like going into this uh camp has been the same it's been for the past uh three or four fights you know i've been up at john marquez in uh in philly um Budokan martial arts belmore kickboxing you know same same crew How's your brother doing? I, I was I know I do this every interview, but uh, how, how's Andre doing these days? He's still competing, right? Or what, what's the latest with he, he him? He wants to compete still. He's still training, still actively training hard. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully something something you know pops off soon. You know what I mean? But he's he's trying to get these fights, but it's tough because a guy like that, you know, he's what twenty five and three or something like that. You know what I mean? No, who's gonna put their six and old prospect up against a guy like that? on the regional circuit, you know what I mean? So, um, tough for him to get fights. Uh, what about training partners who've been some of the main guys this camp? Man, uh, ton of dudes, ton of dudes, um, ton of kickboxers mostly, mostly a lot of, a lot of good kickboxers to kind of come in and mimic the spinning, uh, the spinning attacks, you know, but, um, as far as like the MMA guys, you know, same crew, we got the guys up at Philly, you know what I mean? Brady, you know, the Jeremiah Wells, um, you know, and also some some other younger guys that are coming up that a lot of people don't know yet, but they will know. How long has it been that you've been going up to Philly? Because I know that's been kind of a nice sort of uh, addition to your your camp, and it seems like it works well for everyone because a lot of there's a lot of welterweights up there, which is great. Yeah, it does work well. Um, I'm happy, you know, that I'm I'm actually finally getting a getting a, a groove with a in my MMA groove. You know what I mean? Typically, you know, I'm a guy that I I spend a lot of time in the boxing gyms and in the kickboxing gyms, so. It's good for me to kind of string it together, you know, so it's, you get to see the evolution in my game. You saw some of it in my last fight where I had to make the adjustments and tap into my wrestling a bit. Um, I've always had great grappling. You know, I just never really used it as a primary way of attack. You know what I mean? So um, start to see me using it more and all that. And I, I credit that to just being in a more MMA space. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, it works. It works really well. And I've been I've been doing it for a while now. I want to say for the past three years or so. What about your corner? What that? What is that going to look like in a few weeks? Same squad. Yeah. Same squad. You know, my my corner never changes. Yeah. You know, I can't wait till I get that fourth corner though, so I could throw throw my homies in there. But um, as of right now, you know, I I, I stay with my crew. Okay, that's good. And uh, I know you feel like you're going to get your hand raised. Otherwise, why sign the contract? But how's this one playing out on December 16th? Um, 
I finished this guy as uh is gonna be it's gonna be one of those fights where people are gonna see me in a fight. You know, you don't really you don't really see me in too many of those, right? Too many uh like scraps. Um but yeah, it can go either way. It's either gonna be me, you know, meeting him in the middle and me and him banging it out, or it's gonna be me picking him apart until he's TKO'd. What about the main event? I know you're probably got uh, you know a dog in this fight, so to speak. With I mean, it's Leon. I, I doubt you're ever going to pick against Leon. But how do you think the main event will play out? Let's put it that way. Um, TKO, uh, Leon Edwards. Which round? Ah, uh, come on, bro. This is this is fighting. You can't call a, call a round specifically. But I think he beats him. I think he gets. I think he gets it done. Maybe in the later rounds. You got a couple more fights left on your contract. What's the latest with that? Um, no, nah, I just got a new contract. Oh, congrats! Four fights. Yeah, it's got a new Good contract. for you. That's all. How yeah. many contracts is that now? That's got to be like four contracts in the UFC, I think. If I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting pretty, man. I'm good. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. Well, I just, you. no, no, but I'm just thinking back to like when you made your debut. And I mean, we've been doing interviews, I think, since then. Yeah, um, yeah. This has got to be contract number. It, it's got to be up there, right? Like you've, it's, how, many, yeah. how many contracts have you signed with them now? I don't, I, I don't even know at this point. I don't even know what I could tell you. Um, I make good money. <laughs> good well hey it's well deserved i mean think how, how long you've been in the ufc now how many, how many years since since i'm 16 wow and i've never fought to the fourth fight on my contract I always renew after three yeah does that give you a bit i mean i know contracts you know and any time they can kind of cut you loose but that's got to give you a bit of a boost going into this fight especially around the holidays man <laughs> um no i got my new contract for my last fight okay gotcha you know, so so the um, so so the last fight so the termin fight was the new contract this is yeah, fight yeah, number yeah. two then oh gotcha yeah. okay well, so, still, that's um, great. For me, for me, man, listen, I'm, I'm diligent. You know what I mean? I've never lost two fights in a row. I've always, I always put on a show. You know, um, I've had what, maybe, you know, for sure, maybe I've had my my uh, my bumps in the road. But I, I'm a mainstay, man. At this point, you know what I mean? I've, I always show up. I don't refuse fights. You know what I mean? Um, arguably. I should be in the rankings, you know. That's always something that be, I'm always at the at the door, you know what I mean. Yeah. So um, after this, I mean, we'll see what happens. I should pop in the rankings anytime soon, but yeah, I'm 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 happy, you know, with with my pay and all that shit. And uh, you're doing a lot of stuff outside the cage. Uh, how is it interviewing Michael Bisping in that tiny office at UFC 294? <laughs> what was that all about? Uh, that was cool. That was cool. That's a little thing we got going on, you know, at the tiny office, and uh, we do every pay per view. We do every oh, pay-per-view. Cool. We, we um we just break it down. Who we got the main event and co-main event. So um yeah, I've been doing that. Michael Bisping is my first guest so far. Hopefully, the first of many. And um we keep that going. Have you talked to the UFC about getting on the desk? You've always had good like analysis. I mean, in any of the interviews we've done, you've always been like very like you know very analytical and and speak well about it. So is that something you've thought of? Um for sure, man. I I'd, I'd be, that would be an honor. I'd love to. You know, but we'll see. You know, maybe sometime in the future. That's something I would love to explore. You're not the only person that, that has brought that up to me, but um, we'll see. I would love to. Okay, there you go. How's your, uh, is your Airbnb thing still going strong over there in Jamaica? You still doing that? Still, still popping off, man. I think that's so cool, man. Honestly, props to you. I'm sure you've done quite well with it too, right? So Yeah, man, that's, that's you know, knock on wood. Um, things are going well. I'm, I'm proud. You know, um, I just I just did the right things, you know, and, I, and I'm continuing to, continuing to do the right things and, um, you know, trying to trying to build, you know, and just setting an example for, you know, my son and setting an example for younger generations of fighters that look up to me, you know what I mean? And showing them like, yo, you're doing this thing, but still just make sure, you know what I mean? You you got your head on your shoulders and, you, and you're making the right decisions because uh, we're prize fighters at the end of the day. But, you know, you got to make sure things are right with you and your family, you know what I mean? And, and you got your, your ducks in a row, so... Yeah, I, I always make sure I got my priorities straight. You haven't really been impacted by the market. Like, I've been hearing a lot of stories about how Airbnbs are now, like, as expensive as hotels. Like, it doesn't sound they like are. you've been impacted too much. Yeah. I mean, I have been, you know, and there's a couple. But here's the thing, right? Um, for me, it's the reoccurring customers. Right. So okay. There's things that you can do that you can you can cut out Airbnb. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go. It's a, after a while, you know. People that contact, they contact me directly. You know what I mean? They're not contacting. Right. So you've Airbnb. already got the market, which is good, right? Like that's kind of what you use Airbnb for, Airbnb for, right? So. Exactly. You know, and, and if, maybe if you're, for the newer people now that are having to build clientele and start over, you know, I mean, for sure, I still get, you know, a lot of calls through Airbnb, but mostly it's just reoccurring and word of mouth. You know what I mean? So people are calling me directly, you know, and um, 
recently I bought a house here in New York. You oh, know? congrats. Did Ally yeah, Quinta so. sell your house for you? No, <laughs> he didn't. Everybody asked me that. No, he didn't. Yeah. But, um, you know, I just bought a two family here in New York, rented it out, you know, so um, I'm trying to keep things moving like that, you know. How much has that helped your fight career? And, and let me just explain why. Like, you know, for some fighters, this is all they have. And it's like you you have to fight to, you know, make a living and all that. And I know certainly you just mentioned it there. You're getting paid quite well from the UFC, but you have all this other source of income. Does it take the pressure off a bit when you're fighting, just knowing that like, hey, I'm still going to be OK if I can't fight or, or whatever? No. No, <laughs> not at all. No. Oh, no. Not I just figured all. financially, though, because I know for some fighters, there's a lot of pressure to go out there and, you know, not that there's no pressure, but like the financial side of it is kind of what I meant. Oh, nah, you, you still need to. I live in New York, bro. That's true. It is pretty pricey. Yeah. <laughs> I live in New York and, and you know, I still need two checks regardless. Nobody wants to lose. Okay. And two, it's like, you know, you're two, you're, you're, that's your, that's your, that's your, like your foundation. You know what I mean? And, and winning, fighting trumps everything else that I want to do and everything yeah. else that I do. Ultimately, I want to become a world champion and create, cement myself as a, as a, uh, someone with a legacy in the UFC. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, even if it's not through being world champion, I need a legacy. That's the main thing. Creating legacy, putting on amazing fights and memorable fights that'll last forever. So you know what I mean? And um that's that's really it. That's what that's what trumps it all. You know, so um if I can if I can get rich by doing that, then that's what I'll do. But in the meantime, you know, I just got the hustlers mentality, man. Like that's just how I came up. I'm protect I'm covering my ass, you know what I mean? Yeah. But no, it's it's smart, yeah. Ultimately it doesn't take away the pressure. <laughs> no, no, for sure. I mean, there's pressure in everything you do, but I just mean like, yeah, like, like, but, but I like the honest answer there where it's like, no, I still got to do this. Right. So it's, yeah, it's I still super get important. nervous. I still get like, I still train my ass off. I still, you know, I'm still thinking about this motherfucker every day. I'm still like, <laughs> right. fuck man. Like, you know, the anxiety still there. You know what I mean? And then, you know, we go there and we go do what we do. Uh, before we go, I see you have a cat. What's your cat's name? <laughs> <laughs> Rose. No, no, no worries, no worries. It's it's all good. If you, you can't, is is it he or she? Rosa, Rosalia, what's up, Rosa? Come here. Uh, this, I didn't, I didn't strike you girl. as a cat guy at all. That, that's nah, cool. Nah, nah, this this is my girlfriend's cat. Oh, this gotcha. Cat okay, Rosalia. Yeah. She always every time I'm in front of a camera, she somehow somehow pops up in like some corner or somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. No, I have a, I have a cat too, which is why I, uh, I brought it up because they're cats get a bad rap these days, you know? So yeah. I, I thought that was cool. You, you posted a photo cause they're good companions. Mine has to sit outside. Otherwise I'll interrupt my interview. So can't let that happen. <laughs> what do you what got? Type of, what kind of cat? Uh, so it's a British short hair seal point. So if you looked at my cat, you would think he's Siamese, but he's like, he's just like a British short hair, but with like the seal point coloring. So he looks mm -hmm. Siamese, but he's not. I gotta look that up. I gotta look. That oh, up. I have, yeah, he has an Instagram account. I'll send it to you after. <laughs> oh damn, damn! Oh, you uh, committed. To, you're you're a cat guy for real. For real. I, I am a cat guy. Well, I've had him since I, I basically had him since we since my wife and I got married, and that was in like 2015. So uh, he's oh, wow. he's been around. He's been through everything. So he's like eight. He's gonna be yeah. He just turned eight. So oh wow, I, I like I like rest. Oh, that picture. All right, well like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. So my, my cat. Uh, yeah, kind of nice. looks like that. Here, I'll nice. see if I can get a photo right now. This is going to bore so many people in the audience, but... Uh, <laughs> it is what uh, it is. The yeah, cat segment. Let me see. Uh, you know what? It's not going to work because I'm recording a different camera, but I'll, I'll send it to you after because I'm sure this is uh, at the top of your mind is knowing what my cat looks like. But anyways, uh, UFC 296, December 16th. You got to check it out. Randy, appreciate the time as always. So if there's anyone you want to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors, any social media you want to mention, I'll give you the last um, one. I'll thank everybody, man. Thank, thank my whole team. Thank, thank my team Paradigm. Thank 12 House Collective. Thank, um, thank uh, Marquez MMA. You know, Sensei Nardu, Keith Trimble, um, oh, LRG. I want to thank um, Meta. Um, yeah, shout out Tiny Office. Check that out. 